ProGroupRacing.com.au presents Show Us Your Tips, Dag and Beaver with you looking at midweek racing from Work Farm and Sandown. Beaver, how'd the weekend treat you? Um, geez, mate, it seems such a long time ago. I always um, ask you that. I never think of the answer, so. <laughs> yeah, right. no, I think it was, it was, it was all right. Um, big win by Apache Chase to hold on in the, mm. in the big race. I thought that was, that was impressive. That uh, certainly Did you tip the quaddy? No, I missed Apache Chase. Oh, I have put it, because I, I got the quaddy and I painted out five yes. in a bit, but I um, couldn't remember if you'd put it in or not. No, I didn't. And I was kicking myself because I had actually backed it the start before when it was up at Rockhampton and it got run down by Emerald Kingdom. Mm. Um, and I just wasn't convinced that the 1300 was with the pressure on was going <laughs> to be um, up its alley. But uh, yeah, it was it was great win. Um, stuck on really well. Now, now Najmati, you got in the last uh, outstanding win. Got out to ten dollars. Uh, got out to ten dollars. Crazy. Um, which which was pretty good. Um, a, a good a good pick up there from yourself. Uh, what else was impressive? I thought uh, oh, Dad, was good. It'll back up this week. Bar Brader, yeah, stuck on well. And um, so top and tailed. Uh, unfortunately, the yeah, last... still Prince didn't make it through. Um, no, out for my best of the day. Um, and I can't remember. And then, Corfield. yeah, Caulfield, we got the last winner, Diag- Diaguilar. Oh, Diaguilar. Uh, yeah, that was a good price too. Yeah, that was a good price as well. Yeah, got out to a very nice price. So that was that was a quality win. Um, and, yeah, there was a few others around town that we, we also picked up. So overall, I think uh, it wasn't too bad. Yeah, it was a useful day. Um, I came out in front, so it's all counts <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. But we had to work farm where it is a heavy ten as this morning. A rail is true. Uh, last time was like this. They were getting to the outside fence by the end of the day. I think it's probably going to be similar here. I know some smaller fields. Uh, not as many scratchings as I thought. I thought scratchings might have a bigger effect when I did the form the other day, but uh, I don't think it's made too much of a difference. We kick off with a maiden over the 1,200 metres to start the day, and how are we going to start off? Yeah, pretty tricky affair um, to start the day, to be honest. There's only six starters, and five of them are $5 and under, so not sure what to do with this market, and I'm not sure if there's... Um... It's really a betting market, given that you've got five horses under $5. It seems a bit skinny, um, the market for me, and shows that the bookies can't really um, differentiate these either. If I had to take a pick here, uh, I'd go the unrace one because the race for, the race ones um, appear to be uh, like a little bit of depth. So probably the um, well, the first start up pretty wild on top here for me. Yeah, I, I don't think it's a betting a fair, but uh, I've got Lady Frawley in on top. Uh, I liked it, pulled up Lamont debut. Trials since have all been good getting ready for this. Uh, and I thought the main danger was pretty wild, like you said. Two very quiet trials, J Mac Waller to kick off. But uh, at the current market, I, c- I can't see myself really diving into to a bet to start the day. The two year olds over the 1100 meters is race two. Uh, very big field. This might be a good race. Uh, but I have ended up finding, I think as the market has, a Kubwire on top, which, uh, Kibu, sorry, Kibu on top, who trialed very well, three trials since, uh, debuting in the Breeders, uh, looked to have got through the wet okay and comes here, should get lead, which hopefully earlier in the day shouldn't be too much of a problem. Uh, so it goes on top uh, and that's about it. Secret Revolution was a nice return. Interesting trials from Ramones out wide for Alan Denham, but uh, on top for me, do I really want again do I want to charge in in a big field full of unraced horses? Not particularly, but that's why I've seen it be. For what have you done here? Yeah, I'm, I'm the same. I landed on Kabu as well. Um, started five dollars in a in a Group Three first start, so they obviously uh, had trialed well before that, and they thought had a bit of ability um, and was on pace there. Put out straight after that and uh, won a trial um, very nicely um, not that long ago. So I've got it on top and then I had a close watch on the first starter from the Hawks Camp Capital Theatre. Mm. Uh, race three is a 1,400 metre three-year-old race left with four runners here where I, th- I think by default it's, it's Mystic Mermaid's race to lose. Uh, it's been building a okay to this. J Mac on small field. I know it's gate one, but hopefully you can get the right part of the track. And uh, the market's actually much closer than I thought it would be. 
Uh, but on top from me, what have you done here? Yeah, I thought this was this was pretty tricky here. Um, hard to really know because uh, a horse like Misty Mermaid probably settles back a bit here, doesn't have to get through many horses. I'm just worried a little bit about the speed here and what takes up the speed and if they can control it and make it really hard. I've got Concordia on top. Uh, I thought it resumed okay. Uh, should be further improved by that start. And, and again, in a field, you know, something, you know, where you got three horses, $3-ish, or under, um, not really much of a betting proposition here. <coughs> the market. Right. Race four, benchmark 72 over the 1,300 metres for the girls. A uh, couple of key scratchings. What have, who have you ended up with on top? Yeah, a couple of key scratchings here, which changed it up. I've landed on Camino Rio. Um, thought it was being pretty good this prep. Uh, again, another nice run last start. A starter favourite just couldn't run it. Uh, Park Avenue down. Park Avenue is going quite well and is a genuine chance in the next race, I think it is, or the Absolutely. one after that. Um, so I think yeah, Camino Real will be super hard to beat. I was more in, enticed with the bigger field with some other chances in here to bet. Uh, but I'm, I've, I've ended up with Surlamur on top. Nice enough resumption. Kenzo there, uh, up in distance, is up its alley and I think will run well, but obviously scared of Camino Real. Uh, that form has stacked up since and, and I'm hoping it'll stack up, in, uh, as you've said, when we get to Park Avenue in a couple of races. Uh, race five, 1,400 metres, 72 again, where we see Park Avenue, where I, I'm actually going to put it on top. Uh, I liked its win at Scone. I thought it was uh, very impressive. Gets through the wets okay and hoping it gets through the wet better by this stage of the day than the main danger fine point who... Um, resumed well enough, but was scratched for three months trying to avoid wet tracks. Now turns up on a heavy trend 10. So I was a bit confused by it. The resumption was nice uh, and there's an obvious danger, but I was, I was happy to take the each way price around Park Avenue. Yeah, mate, uh, I concur with your words there. And I've had Park Avenue on top as well. I thought the last, its last four runs have all been very good. Um, I like the scone form. It had 62 kgs uh, last start, so it gets a bit of weight relief for this. Um, and one really convincingly, and prior to that, was impressive up in Eagle Farm behind a pretty decent horse and wasn't far behind the likes of Norwegian Bliss at Hawkesbury prior to that. So all its form leading into this is very consistent, very good, and I think you'll get a sight. Beautiful. 1,000 metres, benchmark 72 is race six. We see the resumption of a potentially a talented horse. Uh, what are you doing here? Yeah, and I'm sticking with Petulant. I think it looks like it's uh, got a little bit of ability here. I think uh, it, the heavy conditions won't hurt. It's won its last start on heavy and trialed well in similar conditions. Um, looks to have a lot more upside than most of these. And uh, I think it'll be winning the, the sixth race. Yeah, I agree. Um, the only concern I have is it hasn't actually beaten anything yet, uh, but uh, the trial is fantastic. Comes here and gets a nice race to resume, uh, to kick off in uh, Metro Company because there's not much else here. So I think it'll roll forward and be very hard to beat. We might see it head towards Saturday grade from here, I would think. Uh, yeah. If it all stacks up well. The last is over the mile, a benchmark 72 where, uh, how am I going to finish the day? I was going to have two bets. I was going to have something on pecuniary interest, resuming with a claim here. Very impressive. Its first two runs in last time in Midway Company. Uh, hopefully can get the outside gate and give you a nice sight here. And me, a star guest, I'm just forgiving the Saturday run back to Midway grade. I think work farm suits and... Uh, will run well as well, both each way price. Uh, I'll, I'll play those two. What are you doing, Beaver? Yeah, I thought the same a little bit as you. I thought Bikini Interest presented really good value here. It'll obviously be looking for further than this, but um, look, if you go back to last, this horse has won eight out of 25 starts and won you know, a quarter of a million dollars. Uh, it's wasn't tested in its trial, but if you go back, it was racing in listed company a couple of starts back um, and was in the market. Uh, started 650 in a listed race at Rose Hill and um, behind where it ran behind So You Win. Um, there was a bit of distance off the winner, 
but um, that, that looks okay type of form for, for this. Uh, certainly the main danger for me is the third up Baltic coast. Uh, it's two wins and two placings from its four starts and hit the line really nicely at Scone. Scone form usually stacks up. Um, just not so sure about the, the Warwick Farm straight, but uh, drawn five should get a good run and finish hard. Beautiful. Uh, to wrap up our thoughts at Warwick Farm on the heavy 10, your best in value. Yeah, my best is race six, number 10, Petulant. I think it's going to be hardest to beat. And my value bet comes up in race five, number five, Park Avenue. I think you'll get about the five fifty six dollars $6 mark. Lovely. I'm with Park Avenue too as my value. I think it'll run very well uh, on a tricky day for a lot of value. And I'm going to make my best Mystic Mermaid. Uh, I agree Petulant's going to be very, very hard to beat, but uh, just looking for something away from that one. We head down to Sandown where there's a bit of rain around. It is currently a soft track, I believe, as I refresh my page. Soft seven, rain around throughout the afternoon, so we'll keep an eye on that. One of the trickiest Sandown cards I can remember doing for a while, Beaver. Yeah, 100%. I think um, quite tricky, uh, some good value, and some decent horses here. But, uh, yeah. yeah, this time of year, hard to line up some of the form with these horses and getting some consistency. So early in the in the winter campaign, usually if they're winning, you can follow them, but um, you've got to see if they can back it up two or three times. Yeah, um, and a bit of fear. We might get to, with if rain comes throughout the track, I think they'd be wanting to get down the, down the middle um, by the end of the day. Uh, we kick off with the yeah. two-year-olds, 1,400 metres here with uh, a couple of scratchings. Berkeley Square comes out. What were you doing to start the day? Yeah, I was going to stick with Legio 10. Um, both two runs have been pretty good. Uh, finished off nicely last start. Couldn't reel in the Berkeley Square that's been scratched in this. Um, I think it'll be improved by that. And uh, hard to go past here. Obviously, don't know a lot about the unraced one that's our favourite in the market. So keep a close watch on the market there. Yeah, I um, yeah, it's an odd race because uh, the couple of last start wins had the big SPs coming into them. So I was... Short answer is I don't really know. I'll, I'll watch and learn from this one. Um, Lindemann was strong through the line. But um, as I said, coming off a... Onto a bit of a back onto a wet track off a big SB winning there. We'll see. So I'll uh, I'll let that one go through the keeper. Race two is a 2400 metre benchmark 70 where I was, uh, as I just looked through the scratchings, the uh, Williams horses come out. I was going to give, um, I'm giving Teofilo st uh, Star a start here. I think uh, it rolled along, probably maybe have gone a bit wild up front early last time, but has had the 2,400 metre fitness check as a result. We'll roll forward here, uh, and I think we'll be a couple lengths in front on the bend, so you'll you'll uh, know your fate early in the straight. Uh, and just worried that there's not many chases. Horrifying. I think it's a dry tracker and just hasn't won for, for over a year, so... I was happy to, to be with the Waterhouse spot trained runner that's now had the, the run over the 24. What were you thinking? Look, yeah, with the, the Yarra Wonga scratched, um, I've come back to horrifying. Um, Tear fellow star, I get your point, it's going to lead, but i just not sure it, gets, it can um, hold them out. Uh, got, got out to a big lead last start, and that just may help some of the horses chasing here, uh, particularly horrifying. If I go back through horrifying's form, um, it ran fifth last start uh, at long odds behind Point in the PM. That was an interesting race and a very good race. I think Point in the PM was outstanding in that race. And I think, if I'm right, Splendiferous was in that race. Yeah. Um, yeah. And had had come off a good win at Morphville and then um, was pretty good last start um, back in Sydney. Um, so that was a pretty good field uh, and it ran extremely well. And then prior to that, um, Ran a very nice race at Mornington uh, and then was going well. Two lengths behind Sir Davy, that was outstanding on the weekend um, and chased it home over an unsuitable 1600. So if it's going to win a race, this is it. Uh, it's either today or uh, Bennett. No, fair enough. Race three, another staying contest over the 21 this time. Benchmark 70. Uh, Sticking with Hopkins, thought it's been good this prep, uh, good through the line last start. Froggy knows how to ride it. Uh, if we're going, coming down the middle of the track, the draw will suit now. 
and you get an each way price uh, from the main danger. The obvious in gate crash, lightly raced, um, Pat Payne, Stayer, always scary. I think you can almost back both of them because I think that's pretty much where the race ends to me, at least. Anyway, what were you thinking? I was thinking exactly that, back both of them. Um, I, I really liked Hopkins' win last start. I thought it was good. Uh, I did tip it, and I thought it set up perfectly. Its form prior to last start was really good. And, um, yeah, I think it's it's going to be super hard to beat. But Gate Crash was outstanding first up. Um, in an unsuitable race, got back to the tail and really launched late, um, hit the line super hard. And this horse just keeps getting better and better. Uh, it gets drawn wide, which means it can come down the middle of the track. And I just think it just might be a little bit too good for these. So I had it on top, but yeah, Hopkins certainly I'll be, I'd be chopping out on that. Race four, 1200 meters, 64. Uh, we've seen about half the field out with scratchings this morning. Tricky one still. What are you doing? Yeah, I've settled on Celsius Star, um, who won its maiden uh, very well last start. Uh, prior to that, had been consistent with a couple of uh, minor placings. But yeah, really liked the way that it um, put the foot down last start um, to break its maiden. I think now it's done that. It can continue to improve. It's from a good stable. Um, and it probably sets up quite nicely here. Yeah, on top for me as well. Um, I like its last start win. I like the gate. I like uh, I like the way it was strong through the line. And I had the main danger is called who's now come out. So even better. Um, Celsius star after the scratchings. The smaller field helps as well, as always. So I still think it's a quite an acceptable price at the moment, around the 6 or $7 mark. Six. So, yeah, not much more to add. Race five is a benchmark 70. Uh, what were you doing here over the 1,200 again? Yeah, um, interesting race here. I've settled on Bubbly Lass uh, from the Mar Eustace stable. I think it uh, comes from Sydney um, down to Melbourne, which is always a good pointer for me um, after two starts. Uh, first up in Melbourne was pretty good at Hamilton behind Ashford Street, who's come out and franked that form again. Uh, come to Sydney, really struggled in probably better class of races. Gets back to Melbourne now in a more suitable race. Uh, my use this place is these horses to perfection and I'm hoping that's the case today. Uh, my main pick has actually come out, I've just noticed. So I'm going to end up, it leaves me with a uh, rebellious bell on top of the win first up. Uh, it was quite strong through the line on a wet track. Well, found the line okay on a wet track, I should say. Um, nice gate by now. So it on top from blistering, who's going to roll along. On pace, track and distance win set up last time, so it, it will be uh, in the finish as well. Quite I think so, Bill, is, Bill, you're right. I think it presents really good value as well. Um, mm. It was a good first up win, uh, a lot to like about it. And if you go back to last prep, it ran fifth behind Gentleman Roy, um, yes. only beaten three lengths. So, uh, again, good form lines for it. And if it's improved, um, as it looks like from this prep, could be a good uh, value chance as well. Yeah, well, originally I had I was looking at playing around it, Bubbly, and um, Circle of Magic, who's come out. Um, so even after scratching, I like the way the values held up this morning. So um, that's the way I'll be looking at it. Benchmark 70, over the mile. A very, very tricky race. Kicks off the quaddy. Uh, where after scratchings, I'm not really left with the bet. So have you any, got anything here? Yeah, it's a bit confusing here. I've come up with uh, Bellavado from the Richards uh, stable. Uh, interestingly enough, they've brought it over from mm. uh, Adelaide for this, uh, which is a good pointer. Last two runs at Gawler have been pretty good. It's got back and run on really nicely. So I'm hoping by this stage of the day, uh, it will suit this horse. And its three starts on soft going have been the only time it has run a place for one so i think it definitely likes to sting out the ground and that's why we're probably seeing it here um so that's a good form line for me and at seven dollars i think that's good each way chance and jamie carr can't hurt can it can no hurt. that's right race seven is a benchmark 70 over the mile uh a couple here i want to play with again um mark holt resumed concern is might have gone to wet want to see how wet it gets but Nice resumption um, over the 1,400 metres at Pakenham. Goes well second up here. 
and out to the mile uh, is two from three. Uh, we know it's going to be ready to go from the Patrick Payne stable and you get an each way price. I can see that once it is going to be back and wide, but he's going to be swooping from uh, Vitruvius, who I'm only really got going through the line late at uh, Flemington, but he's now right back in grades, dropping back from a benchmark 100 to a benchmark 70. Should be, will be the, the other one swooping. I think both, I liked the price when it was a bit bigger, Vitruvius being back this morning, but both are backable and... Um, Fairly keen, actually, if the track's playing all right. What do you make of it? Yeah, I've got a keen on Petruvius myself, um, particularly at the price. I think you're right. I think it's uh, just back a lot in grade here. Uh, first two runs were at round seven, <coughs> finished hard at Bendigo behind Lena's Legend, and then, again, only beaten um, in a very close go with Sir Davey at Sandown, two starts back. Um, got out of the it's ground last start, but still finished and hit the line hard. Uh, sets up perfectly here for it. And I think everything points in its favour here. Race eight is a 1,300 metre benchmark 70. What are your thoughts on this one? Yeah, an, another interesting race here. And my, my tip here is Centiro. Um, overnight, I see there's been a fair bit of money for it. Um, last night when I looked, it was around the $9 mark. Um, it's now into $5.50. Uh, interestingly enough, I'm resuming here. Um, Troll okay, uh, which is good, but uh, again, uh, it will be suited by a little bit of pace here and coming down the middle of the track. Um, Paddy Payne, 1300 metres. Again, it'll probably want further, but fresh enough. Uh, the right pace uh, can knock them all out. Some nice horses through its form. Castle Ray Yeah, and also. Um, yeah, no, good find. Uh, I I end up coming to Saw High Luck. It's Try Luck in Sydney. Um, has Did some okay stuff last time. First up, last prep beat I Am Lethal and uh, Mirror View Home, which is, is decent Sydney form. And comes down here. I assume the hope was a drier track, but it stayed in, so we'll see how it goes. You've mentioned Santiro and Chief Alton is building to a win. I think they're the three main chances. And... Um, I guess it might just depend on how the track's playing. If so, I can get a decent enough lead, it can hold on. We wrap up the day for 1300 meter benchmark 70. Um, just checking scratches. What are you doing to finish off? Yeah, this was the probably the one race that I wasn't so confident about. I'm pretty pretty keen on a lot of my other selections um, at the prices um, today, but this was this was pretty tricky. I settled on uh, Realizer uh, yeah. number two. Um, thought it was pretty good last start uh, behind Jigsaw. Again, Jigsaw's flying, uh, carried the 61, so uh, should handle the weight okay. Sting out of the ground doesn't doesn't hurt it, and um, if it reproduces that run, I think we'll get a sight here. Yeah, I I think that I basically made the note the market's right. I agreed with Real Leza, I agreed Red Red Wine's going well. Uh, one at a bit of value, maybe first up that can run well is... Um, is Diaquin goes well in the wet wide gate. We'll see how that, you know, we'll know by now how the track's playing. But um, I was basically 265, so it was in market order and um, struggled really to get much more confident than that. For progetracing.com.au, I'm going to make my best, I'm going to make my best tier fellow star after the scratchings and I'll make my value Hopkins uh, in race number three. What were yours? Yeah, my. Um... Best bet comes up in race seven, number seven, Vitruvius. I think it'll be super hard to beat. And my value bet comes up in race eight, number nine, Santiro. Very good, Beaver. You got any for us in Queensland? Oh, I couldn't be a, a day without it, could there? No. Um, so I do have a few things up in Doomben. Race two, number four, the first start at Golf of Venus. Uh, a little bit skinny, but I think it'll get you um, something in the bank up there to start. Um, followed up by another one that's a little bit short, uh, the catch, race five, number three. So those two will um, give you some bank. And then if you follow that up in race seven, number two, maybe the best, uh, a little bit of value. And then followed up by race eight, number eight, Castile. Um, again, around the $4 mark, uh, you can finish off so your early one can give you some bank to go a bit each way a bit later in the day. 
Beautiful. That looks a good little card there at Doom. And I, wait, I guess we'll see how the track's holding up, but some nice horses in there. Uh, that's that's it. Let's show us your tips. Dag and Beaver signing off. Uh, good party today, guys. We'll be back tomorrow night to preview uh, what's next, Beaver? Queensland Oaks, is it? Yes. Saturday. Oaks Day, as well as a support card from, from somewhere. Um, we'll confirm that then. Until then, guys, good hunting, and we'll chat soon.